Hey everyone, my name is Damon Parr. This is the introductory video in a series of videos that will help you better manage your whitetail deer herd through working together with neighboring landowners. State wildlife agencies can only manage the whitetail deer to the county or unit level. Whitetail deer management has to be far more concentrated than that because what's happening on this property right here within a county might be far different than what's happening on this property over here in the same county, but maybe just a few miles down the road. There are many landowners out there practicing some form of quality deer management. I'm here to talk to you about the future of quality deer management. I am fortunate to hunt in an area where all landowners work together to manage the whitetail deer. Let me ask you some questions. Are you afraid of what happens to deer when they leave your property? Are you making improvements to your ground to try and hold deer because of this fear? Do you have neighbors that you'd like to work together with, but maybe your neighbors have different goals? So because of these differences, you just don't know where to start to work together. I'm here to talk to you about number one, how I work together with neighboring landowners to manage the whitetail deer. Two, I'm gonna show you results. Three, talk to you about how we work together. And four is the call to action. Let's get right into number one. I have been working together in an organized way with my neighbors to manage the whitetail deer since 2008. We currently manage a 2,500 acre area and there are 14 different landowners. We track every deer that we harvest. We track the number of does, we track the number of bucks and the age of the bucks. We share all of our information. We share our harvest photos. We share our trail camera photos. This way, every hunter, every landowner in the area knows what's out there. Now I wanna get into number two, results. In the 2020 hunting season, in the 2,500 acre area, we harvested 46 does and 18 bucks and the average age of the bucks were four and a half years old. I'd like to share with you some of the results that we had on our property alone. My dad, my uncle, and myself own property as part of the 2,500 acre area. On October 21st, I was fortunate to harvest this really nice five and a half year old 10 pointer. Five days later, at 8.30 in the morning on October 26th, my dad was able to harvest this just awesome buck. Great mass on this deer, a lot going on on this eight point frame. Just, just an awesome deer. Later that day, the same day, October 26th at 2.30 in the afternoon, my uncle was able to harvest this buck, another five and a half year old buck. Two five and a half year olds one six and a half year old. Fast forward to right now, we're into the beginning of March. Right now, we have five bucks on our property that are four and a half or older, including this buck. And this was a four and a half year old nine pointer in 2020. He's a deer that could blow up and just have a huge frame in 2021. So we're pretty excited about him. Why am I telling you what we have right now? I'm telling you what we have right now because we just put 475 inches of antler on the ground in five days during the early archery season. And then we harvested a four and a half year old eight pointer during the firearm season. So it would be reasonable to think that 2021 is gonna be a step back. That's not the case. If there's no winter kill, we are going to have five bucks on our 162 acres in the fall of 2021 that we know about that are five and a half or older. Next year is not a rebuild situation. It's a reload situation. And that's what happens when landowners start working together. That's what happens when you manage a 2,500 acre area, 14 different landowners who are all working together towards similar targets. That's what happens when landowners start thinking outside of their own property lines more globally. 
The sky is the limit for the potential of the white-tailed deer when this happens. Now, it wasn't always this good. We built up to this. We created this. So I want to go back to the beginning and talk about number three, how we work together. When we started this process back in 2008, we were at a serious disadvantage, and we still are, because we are on sandy river bottom soil that lacks nutrients to promote explosive antler growth. When we started this process in 2008, we did not have very many mature deer in our area. And when I say mature, I'm talking about a buck that's five and a half or older. It is so important to have deer of this age class participating in the breeding cycle for the overall health of your herd. In 2008, our herd dynamics were not in balance. We had far more does than bucks. Again, this is unsustainable because the bucks will have to work so hard during the breeding cycles to breed all the available does that they will be more run down, which will lead to greater winter kill and just more overall stress on the herd. It's the classic snowball effect. We were not all on the same page as landowners when we started this process. We didn't have the same opinion of how many deer should be harvested. Didn't have the same opinion of what of how old a mature buck was what's a target buck we made progress because we decided to be good neighbors to be friends to work together share information help each other support each other be mentors see every hunter every landowner comes from a different background starts in a different place has a unique perspective on how things should happen and many times these unique perspectives from landowner to landowner do not align but that doesn't mean that landowners cannot find common ground to begin to work together for a healthier future for their white-tailed deer better hunting opportunity the communication from landowner to landowner within this process is vital and I've been living it for the better part of the last two decades. I have a good idea of what works and what doesn't work. And it's my mission to help landowners implement this process into their hunting area. With that being said, let's get into number four, the call to action. As I said earlier, there are many landowners out there practicing some form of quality deer management. If you are a landowner that's listening to this, and you're practicing quality deer management and working together, communicating with your neighbors, that's awesome. I want to learn from you. Seriously, let's work together and blow the top off this thing. If you're a landowner that's out there that's practicing quality deer management, but you don't have open lines of communication with your neighbors, Having open lines of communication with your neighbors, working together with them is the next step for you to improve your hunting opportunity. If you're a landowner out there that's not practicing quality deer management, let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you want to have the opportunity to harvest a really big buck? Do you want to experience consistently good hunting opportunity where you see good numbers of deer year after year after year? If the answer to these questions is yes, then practicing quality deer management and working together with your neighbor neighbors will help you achieve these goals far quicker. We have a herd management tool available on our website at Internal Flame Outdoors. That's Internal Flame Outdoors. This herd management tool allows you to start tracking harvest data. And tracking your harvest data from landowner to landowner is vital. We as landowners have to know where we're at today if we want a better hunting future tomorrow. What gets measured gets accomplished. If this all sounds pretty good to you, but you're not sure where to start, start by forwarding this video to your neighbors. That's a great place to start. I will be releasing many videos on this channel that break down what I believe are the critical steps in the process of working together with your neighbors. My friends, 
we have the opportunity to create a next level hunting landscape across the board that's never been seen before. And it's never been seen because state wildlife agencies cannot accomplish it. The hunter, the landowner, we, we are the only ones who have intimate enough knowledge with our properties that can make the correct management decisions from year to year. The problem is most landowners don't own enough property to cover the entire range of the white-tailed deer. So truly, in most cases, the only way to effectively manage the deer is to do it across property lines. The time is now, right now, to reach out to your neighbors, open the lines of communication, and start planning for better hunting in 2021. Again, please visit my website at internalflameoutdoors.com. We're just getting going. There's gonna be more tools added to the website as time goes on, but right now that herd management tool is available and it is a vital tool to start this process. My internal flame is that all hunters experience good hunting opportunity. I want all hunters to have a chance to harvest a really big buck. I truly hope that we can work together to promote a healthier hunting future and provide better hunting opportunity for years to come. Thank you.